Hi, I'm Paul from The Studio Rats. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how I mix the song This Desire by The Studio Rats featuring Jack Rubinacci. In this video, we're going to start with mixing the drums. So let's have a listen to the drums without any processing on, without any mixing. So what I'm going to do is to mute all of my inserts and to mute all of my sends. And here's the drums just raw. Okay, let's bring in the inserts and let's bring in the sends. And this is what we ended up with. So let me show you how I got there. Here we go. The first part of the drum kit that we're going to start to mix is the kick in. As you can see, we've got three kick mics. We've got kick in, kick out and sub kick. And what I'm going to use for this is soft tube console one. So let's load that into a slot one. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using the same plugins or even the same DAW as me. All of the principles of what I do in these videos will translate to any compressor or any EQ plugin that you have. When I load up console one, the first thing that comes up is the emulation of the SSL S4000E series. And that's what I'm going to be using for the kick in. So the first thing that I want to do is to have a listen to the kick and start to high cut and low cut just so we can clean up the bottom and the top frequencies. So let's have a listen. Okay, let's start with a high cut. Now, I don't really want to be taking off any of the frequencies here, really. I'm just cleaning up the very top end and the very bottom end. And let's move on to the low cut. And let's low cut this about 18 hertz, as we don't really want to be affecting any of the sub frequencies. Okay, let's move on to the EQ. Right, I'm going to bring the low frequency down to about 60 hertz. And let's give that a bit of a boost. Now, there are normally certain frequencies on all instruments that if you attenuate them, it improves the sound. For me, on most percussive instruments like drums, 400 hertz is a frequency that you can remove and it instantly sounds more modern. So let's do that. So let's bring the low mid frequency down to about 400. And let's dip that. And let's tighten up the cue. Okay, so now if I bypass the EQ, you should be able to hear the difference. The next thing that I want to do is to just dip some of the high frequencies as well. So let's do that. So let's go to about 6K. And let's cut there a bit as well. And let's turn up the cue. Now, even though this is subtle, I know when I add in the kick out mic and the sub mic, that's going to fit in the mix a lot better. So let's have a look at the compressor. Right, let's turn up the ratio a bit. I'm pretty happy with the attack and the release. And let's bring back the threshold. Now, one of the great things about this plugin is the drive section, as we can start to drive the input section of the console. Let's do that. Right, let's bypass that plugin. And 
and let's bring in. Now let's move on to the kick out mic. Let's have a quick listen to it. Now with this track, I want to increase the bottom end, but you can hear the snare more in the kick out mic than you could in the kick in mic. So I'm just going to control that and I'm going to use a gate for that. So let's bring in FabFilter Pro G. Now let's bring back the threshold. And the attack. Let's turn up the release. Right, let's turn on the look ahead mode. And let's have a look at the side chain. Now, all I want to be doing on this is to control the top end frequencies of that snare, just to reduce it a bit. Let's have another listen. So what I can hear now is the kick drum coming through, but also the snare is suppressed. Okay, let's move on to the EQ and compression. And again, let's bring in console one for this. Now, as this is the kick out mic, I'm gonna high cut much higher than I did for the kick in mic. Let's do that first. Now I'm gonna leave all the bottom frequencies in there, so I'm not gonna low cut. Right, let's add a bit of EQ here. Let's add a bit of 60 Hertz. A little bit higher, actually. Let's go about there. And let's really boost it. Now, as in the other mic, let's cut about 400 Hertz. And let's tighten up that cue. I'm quite happy with the way that sounds, so I'm not going to compress it at all. But let's move on to the sub kick. And again, let's bring in console one for that as well. Now, because the kick in mic and the kick out mic are doing all the top end information and the mid information, all I want from the sub kick is just the sub and the very low information. So I'm gonna high cut a lot lower. So I can get rid of all that information at the top. So as you can see there, I'm high cutting at 300 Hertz. Now let's have a listen to those three mics together. And let's bypass our inserts. So now for me, the kick drums are fitting together much better. Okay, let's move on to the snare tops. Okay, let's drag in console one again. Okay, I'm not gonna cut any of the highs, but let's cut some of the low, just to get rid of some of the rumble. And the next thing I'm gonna do is to bring in the gate. So let's bring the threshold in. And that's really starting to tidy stuff up. And let's increase the release and the sustain. Let's give it a bit more punch. Okay, let's bypass that. Okay, so that's really starting to control stuff now. Now let's have a look at the EQ. Let's boost the bottom end a bit. And let's try about 150 Hertz. Now I can hear some frequencies around one kilohertz, 800 to one kilohertz. Let's have a listen here that I want to control. And let's increase the cue a bit. Now, as I'm cutting, 
I normally tend to have a higher Q. If I'm boosting, I tend to have a lower Q as well. Okay, let's boost the high mids. And just about there. And let's tighten up that Q as well. And also, let's have a boost around 8 kilohertz. Okay, let's bypass the EQ. Now, one of the great things that I feel about the SoftTube Console 1 is I would have never drawn a, an EQ curve like that, but I'm using my ears. And that's what this plugin really does. It really helps you to use your ears. Let's turn on the compressor. So with this, I'm going to use some parallel compression. Let's turn up the threshold. And I'm pretty happy with that. OK, let's drive it a bit. character. Now I'm going to bypass this plug and you can hear the difference. Let's bring it in. So what this has given us now is some nice snap on the snare. But now I want to add some 1176 to this. So I'm going to use the Waves CLA 76. Let's have a listen to this so far. OK, let's turn the release up so we get more snap. And the attack just a little bit as well. OK, let's bypass that. Now, what the 1176 sound gives us is a lot more snap. OK, let's hear that so far with the kicks. And let's bring the snare bottom. So let's load in console one. OK, let's high cut. And low cut as well. Now, I don't need the bottom end of the snare on the bottom of the snare. So let's, uh, let's low cut about 112. Right, still I want to gate it as well as I'm still getting some of the other instruments through there. Just starting to remove it here. Let's turn the release up. And the sustain. Let's give it some punch. Right, let's really bring the snap out. OK, I'm happy with the bottom end of the snare, but I just want to remove some of the low mid frequencies. And actually, it's going to be more of the mid frequencies. So let's have a look about one kilohertz. Let's boost it first of all, actually. Let's turn up the Q. So you can really hear the frequency that they want to get rid of. So that donk there, let's get rid of that just a little bit. And let's boost the high mids. So about 4K. Turn up the Q just a little bit. Right, let's put a shelf on the top. And boost from about 3K. Let's bypass EQ. And bring it in. OK, let's have a listen to both snares together. And let's bring in the kicks. And 
and let's bypass all of those plugins. So now we've got a nice tight bottom end, but the snap of the snare is really poking through. And now again, let's load in an 1176 just to bring out the body and the snap of that snare. Okay, let's solo the snare bottom again. Let's turn up the attack a bit just to reduce the transient and the release to let more snap through. Let's hear the drums where we are so far. So as you can see, the snare top and the snare bottom are sent to an output, which is snare sub. Now my snare sub mix is gonna be processed and affected. So I'm treating both of those two tracks as one. Okay, let's move on to the hi-hats. Now, just by listening to those hi-hats, I know that there's a lot of bottom end information that I need to get rid of just to clean up because we don't need that on the hi-hats. So again, let's load in console one and let's low cut. So I'm listening to the point where I start to lose information. So let's try it around 200 hertz. Okay, I'm gonna reduce some of the, the high frequencies here. So let's put it on a shelf and let's just reduce that just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna drive it again. See, that's starting to sound nice there. And let's lower the character now. So I'm gonna go the other way, which is gonna reduce the high frequencies. Okay, let's have a look at the toms. Now, the toms only appear at certain points in the fills in the song. So let's, let's loop this section here. And let me highlight the toms. Now, as with toms, there's a lot of low-end information. And because we're gonna be parallel compressing later on and adding these toms to the drum sub, we wanna get rid of some of the low-end information because the compressor, when I compress, is just gonna be flatlining. So let's increase the loop point here. And let's just start with tom one. Okay, again, let's load in console one. And let's get rid of some of that low-end. And to be honest, I'm quite happy with the sound of that tom so far, so let's leave that there. One of the things we tend to do when we're mixing is to put plugins and to, to use compressors and EQs on every single track, and sometimes it's not needed. Because I'm not using any more EQ on this, I might still want to compress it. And one of my favorite compressors on toms is a Blue Stripe 1176. Let's turn up the input a bit. Bring back the output just to balance it. Let's increase the attack and speed up the release. Right, let's bypass that. Let's bring it in. Now that's controlled the transient of the tom, but it's also just brought up the sustain a little bit as well. Right, I'm going to copy over the settings that I use on tom one to tom two. But let's have a look at floor tom one. Okay, let's high cut. I'm really gonna bring it back quite far. I just wanna get rid of some of the top end information. And let's low cut about 80 hertz. And let's copy that 1176 onto floor tom one as well. Let's have a listen to that. Right, and that's working for me. Let's move on to floor tom two. And again, let's copy console one on. And high and low pass. Let's low cut at about 90. And bring the high cut down to about four kilohertz. 
And let's just copy over the 1176 and see how that sounds. And now let's have a listen to all of those drums together. And let's hear the toms. Okay, let's have a look at the ride mic here. Now the ride throughout this whole song is not actually being hit. So we're gonna use this ride mic as a sort of a room mic. So let's compress it. Right, let's bring back the attack. Let's turn up the ratio. And let's bring back the threshold. So I'm really gonna squash it just to really bring out the whole sound of the drum kit. And let's drive it a bit harder as well. Let's turn back the character a bit. Okay, let's put that back to the volume it was. And now let's hear that with the rest of the kit. Okay, let's bypass all the inserts, just to see where we are. And bring it in. So that's now starting to sound like a really nice drum sound to me. Let's bring in the overall sound of the drum kit, which is the overheads, and let's solo that. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna to do to this is to remove some of the frequencies. And I'm gonna use one of my favorite EQs, which is a Fab Filter Pro Q2. Okay, let's dip the bomb end. And let's remove some of that paper frequencies that I was talking about earlier. Let's boost it first of all so you can hear it. Let's turn up the Q a bit and let's dip it. Bypass that. Okay, I'm also gonna use console one to EQ as well. Let's put a shelf on it. Let's dip that bit. And that's just gonna remove all the top end symbol harshness. Now on the overheads, I'd like to get some character from an 1176, as I'm really gonna smash it. Let's turn it up a bit. And let's do it 12 to one. Okay, let's speed up the attack just to squash the transients a bit. And let's, uh, let's put the release on its fastest. Actually, let's give it a bit more input and compensate with the output. Bypass it. Okay, let's hear the drums on their own. And again, let's bypass all of the inserts. And bring it in. So to me, the drum kit starts to feel more cohesive now, but I still wanna process the snares. And as I'm sending them to the snare sub, I'm just gonna add some compression and some EQ to that. Now let's drag on the Sheps Omni channel made by Waves onto my snare sub. Now, as I've got the drum kit sound together, I'm now gonna start processing by listening to the whole drum kit. Turn up the saturation. Let's put it on the heavy setting. And let's add some bottom end thump to it. Okay, let's uh, let's roll back some top end and some bottom end. Let's put some EQ on it. 
going to bring back some of the low mids. And let's bring in the compressor. Let's keep it on the VCA setting. Let's wind back the threshold. A bit too much there. Now the snare now is starting to thump a bit. So I'm gonna bring back the mix of the compressor. Let's bring back the output. Let's check levels. And bring it in. Right now that snare is really poked out in the mix. Now let's go to the drum sub as I want to be affecting the whole drum kit. As you can see here, my snare sub is also sent to my drum sub. So now I'm affecting the whole drum kit. I'm going to add some EQ onto the drum kit. Okay, let's turn it up to 60 hertz. Let's give it a bit of a boost. See, now that's really bringing out the low end of that bass drum. And let's boost about 8K as well. Let's bypass it. So what that's done is to bring up the low level and also to sweeten up the top end. Now the next thing I want to do is to compress the whole drum kit as a whole. And I'm going to use the UAD API 2500 for this. Okay, let's bring back the threshold. Slow down the attack, bring back the ratio a bit, speed up the release, Let's add some gain to that. Change the threshold and the tone. As you can hear now, the top end's really come out. Bypass that. See, now we've got the drum kit sounding as a whole. What I'd like to do to it is to start to add some parallel drum compression. Okay, now if you have a look at my mixer here, you'll see right next to my snare sub, I've got something called Parallel Drum Bus. And what I've got in there is uh, the UA emulation of the Fairchild 670. So what I'm going to do with this is use this as my parallel drum bus. So I'm going to be sending different elements of the drum kit over to this. So let's close that. And now I'm going to use my sends to send an amount to that. I'm going to come over to my sends here and I'm going to choose parallel drum bus. So let's bring that all the way back to zero and let's just bring it in slowly. So instantly a load of weight has come from those kicks. Now I'm gonna add them to the kick out and the sub kick. So let's just copy that over for the moment, bring it back, and let's just bring that in slowly to the kick out. That's sounding nice. And let's use the same on the sub there. So as you can hear now, got loads of bottom end. And let's have a look at the 670, what it's doing. Now I tend to have my parallel drum bus quite loud in my mix and it adds so much more power to the drum kit. Now I don't want to put the parallel drum bus on my snare top, my snare bottom. So I'm going to do that on my snare sub. So let's bring it in here. Let's bring it in. Let's crank it up a bit more. So about there's working for me. Let's have a look at my hi-hats. And let's copy them over to my toms. Let's find a part where the toms are hitting. Okay, that's sounded good. Let's just copy that over to my other toms. 
and it's loaded in on my ride as well. Now that's working. Let's copy it over to my overheads. Let's bring that back just a bit. So let's hear the drum kit with all of the inserts and the parallel drum compression. And now let's bypass all of the inserts and the parallel as well. Bring in the inserts. And now the parallel drums. And now let's add in the bass guitar just to see how that sounds. And let's hear all the drums in the mix. Now the drums are starting to sound really good, but I want to add some space into the sounds of the drums and I want to make them sound like they're recorded in a much bigger room. Now when James records, he's actually recording in quite a small room. Now it's quite easy to use reverbs and delays to really enhance the sound of your drum kit. So let's do that. Let's start with my kick in. Now what I'm going to do first of all is to load in my drum room. Now what I'm using for this is Exponential Audio Nimbus and we're using the preset Studio 2 for this. Let's unsolo my kit here and let's just have a listen to the kick in. Let's just bring it back. Okay, let's copy that over to my kick out. Let's turn that up a bit. And let's also copy that over to my sub kick. Okay, now I'm not going to do any processing from my snares, I'm just going to do that from the snare sub. Let's bring it back. Okay, now let's bring it onto my hats. Now I'm not going to worry about my toms, but let's bring it onto my right. Let's bring that back. Okay, let's copy over that drum room to our overheads. Now, with the overheads, because the overheads are picking up the widest amount of space because they're picking up majority of the room, I'm gonna really increase the reverb for the overheads. Let's try that. Okay, let's highlight all of the drums. Let's mute all my sends and bring it in. So now we've got the sound of the room into those drums. Let's add some more effects. Now I'm not going to add anything else to my kick in and my kick out as I don't want to make them sound too unnatural. But let's add some more reverb to the snare first of all. And we're going to do this on the snare sub. Now let's load in another copy of Nimbus and we can use a preset neutral hall. Turn it up a bit. So already it's starting to sound like the snare is definitely bigger in a bigger space. Now let's load in another reverb onto that snare and I'm going to be using the AMS RMX16. The setting that I'm going to be using from the AMS is a non-lin setting and this is going to give the snare an almost unnatural 80s sort of sound to it. Bypass it and bring in. Let's really turn it up. Let's just bring it in so it's a bit more subtle. So as you can hear now, it's got a like gated reverb to it, and I really love gated reverbs on snares. Now the last plugin that I'm going to load in on the snare is a chamber, and let's bring this right back. 
and let's bypass all of the sends on that snare sub. So as you can hear, it's almost a bit flat and lifeless. Bring it in. So now that's really starting to open up into a great drum sound. Now I'm going to put some chamber on the ride. And I'm just going to add just a tiny bit. And let's copy that over to the overheads as well. Just bring it back just a bit more. Now on the overheads, I'd like to add in a little bit of Ocean Way Studios. Now on my toms, I'd like to add some chamber as well. So now those toms sound absolutely massive. Let's bring it back just a little bit. So now that I've got my whole drum sound complete, let's have a listen to that with the bass. And let's bypass all my inserts and all my sends. And bring them in. And now let's hear that in the track. Join me in the next video where I'm going to be mixing the bass and then the vocals. Now, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you can leave a comment, even better. And don't forget to push that little bell button and you'll be informed of any future videos that the Studio Rats make. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.